Come one, come all, let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks and not talk about the performance on the ice, because believe me, I've had my fair share of talking about what's going on on the ice, and everybody who's been following this team has been seeing that so, just seeing my mental state deteriorate every single passing moment watching this team blow leads, but... Today we're not focusing on the on-ice product, today we're focusing on the players, and we're focusing on the trade rumors, because, lo and behold, it is Elliot Friedman dropping a few bombs on us on the radio the other day that I really just wanted to take a look at and meme the heck out of, because when it comes to the way the Vancouver Canucks are, I honestly would be okay with selling. That's my first point that I would like to make here. If we get to a point where sometime in the next few months, maybe sometime in the next calendar year, Jim Benning or whoever is at the helm of the general manager position decides for the Canucks that yes, the time is now. My time is up. My time is now. You cannot stop me from trading away our players. Let's go ahead and do that to acquire picks or acquire prospects or whatever. I would be on board. Full send. On board for me. But... Just getting that little piece of information out of the way, because I know it's so relevant to the conversation. Let's go over some of the players that might actually be in these conversations here when it comes to trading away your players and getting other assets, because Elliot Friedman on the 31 Thoughts blog firstly posted something I wanted to talk about, and then he went over onto Vancouver Sportsnet Radio to talk about a few other things. So, firstly, we are indeed going over the 31 Thoughts article from the other day. This is the article, When Will the 2021 NHL Entry Draft Take Place? I will leave a link in the description to the full article so you can go ahead and read it. It's not just Canucks stuff in here, it's a whole bunch of other stuff too. I'm pretty sure everybody kind of knows what 31 Thoughts is about. But if we go over to thought number 18, he says that it will be interesting to see if the fallout from negative publicity in Arizona means the team considers adding a player or two to compete in the West. The Coyotes, they play hard. They're in the race, and they came back from down 3 nothing to shock Anaheim 4-3 to Monday night. The heat is on in Anaheim. That was a rough defeat. Hmm, blowing 3 nothing leads and losing 4-3. to Where have I seen that before? The Coyotes are looking for a center and could check out on a rental like Brandon Montour or Tanner Pearson, should he become available. There indeed is another paragraph in this thought, and the publicity of Arizona, that's something that we actually have not made a video about, but it has been very well documented if you want to go ahead and check the articles about that. But that's our first thought here in this video, the Arizona Coyotes and Tanner Pearson. Give it a few hours, and Elliot Friedman makes his way over onto Sportsnet 650, and he has this comment that was published on the 650 Twitter account. The Arizona Coyotes have kicked around the idea of Tanner Pearson if he becomes available, but there is no proof that he is. The Canucks haven't put him out there, but he is on the Arizona Coyotes' radar if that becomes a possibility. So, firstly, with Tanner Pearson, he's a guy who is indeed in the same situation as Alex Edler. His contract expires this season, and even though he said he would love to play in Vancouver, everybody just kind of memed on it and said, oh, I hope the Canucks have enough time to re-sign him, because we all know the last time the Canucks had a former LA Kings Stanley Cup champion that wanted to come back to Vancouver, they ran out of time, and he went over the Montreal. But... Regardless, with Tanner Pearson, he is indeed in a weird spot because we all kind of know the consequences of what happens when you don't attend to your pending free agents. It happened here with Markstrom, Tanev, Toffoli, Stetcher, and yeah, Tanner Pearson, Alex Edler, two guys in the same boat for this year's crop of players. But for Tanner Pearson, if there is indeed a market for a guy like this, when is the opportunity right to go ahead and exploit that? Because it's the Arizona Coyotes right here, a team that is kind of competitive, a team that is doing their job when it comes to getting wins. Connor Garland has been really good for them over there. Barrett Hayton, obviously, he's getting better. Clayton Keller, you want to see this guy improve. But if they're out there in the rental market... Is Tanner Pearson the guy you want to go out there and say yes to? However, the conversation kind of shifts around because if you trade a Tanner Pearson, it means you're giving up on the season. Straight up. It means that you don't believe this team is good enough to go out there and contend for a playoff spot, which, frankly, I don't really think they are because we haven't seen the consistency that a team like that, a team in that position to make the playoffs, needs. 
But for Tanner Pearson, he is indeed a top six player in this squad. He plays on the defensive shutdown line with Bo Horvat and Niels Hoglander. And if you're trading this guy away, even if it is for futures, it means this season is a bust. So for the Arizona Coyotes, I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, the Arizona Coyotes don't have any draft picks. They don't have any prospects. What's going on? What will we get from Arizona that would actually make us a better team in the long term that actually would help us out in a trade like this? And you know, even though they don't have the top tier prospects in their system anymore, I would go out there and say, you know what? There is a guy that I would like from the Arizona Coyotes. He's a guy who is in Sweden right now. He is playing in the SHL in Europe, and he is the top point producer in that league. And his name is Emil Pettersson. And yes, you heard that right. Elias Pettersson's older brother is a product of the Arizona Coyotes, and his rights are held by the Arizona Coyotes right now. His rights were acquired a year ago when the Nashville Predators traded him over, and, you know, even though he hasn't really worked out all too well in the AHL, he's been doing very well in the SHL this season, taking big leaps and becoming one of the best players in that league. Obviously, there's no guarantee that anything like this could ever happen or that it actually would be profitable, but you know what? Darn it, if we're talking about Arizona Coyotes trades, unless you're giving me Clayton Keller or Victor Soderstrom, I don't want to hear it. Give us Emil Pettersson so we can play him with Elias and then have Quinn Hughes and Luke Hughes when the Canucks end up becoming worse because they don't have Pearson on the team anymore, so their draft pick position goes higher, and then we could have Hughes, Hughes, Pettersson, Pettersson. How does that sound, baby? That sounds great. That's just the GM mind in me kind of going at it. But you know what? We do have another trade rumor to talk about here with Vancouver. Let's go over back onto Sportsnet 650 because Elliot Friedman not only spoke about Tanner Pearson and the Arizona Coyotes, he spoke about Jake Vertanen. The only thing I have heard about the Canucks recently is that they talked to Anaheim about Jake Vertanen. But the second year of Jake Vertanen's contract is a challenge, and oh boy, this is it, right? This is it. Not only was the decision to re-sign Jake Vertanen coming back to bite the Canucks, but the challenge is coming with the fact that they signed him for two years. Two years at 2.55 as an AAV. That is a problem. The minor salary is $3.4 million. It's a little bit beefier than the first year there. So, if you're going out here and the Anaheim Ducks are a team that is looking to get this kind of guy, but the Ducks, who are one of the worst teams in the Western Division at the moment, are saying, nah, sorry, we can't do that, man. Look at that 2.55 AAV cap hit. That's quite a lot. This is one of the worst teams in the league saying that they don't want to take on a guy who's young. There were a whole bunch of Ducks fans that popped up on my timeline saying things like, oh, why would we want Vertanen? We saw how Nick Ritchie worked with us last time, and it just seems like they're really in love with this 2014 draft. They really want to go out there and get the guys from it, right? But you know what? If it gets to a point where even the Anaheim Ducks are coming out here saying, no, we don't want to do it, sorry, bud, then I don't even know what to think. Like, if you could get a draft pick or something out of this, this could be something that I honestly would kind of be on board with, just so the Canucks could go out there and get some opportunity for some other guys, you know? And if it's not a draft pick, hey, it's Trevor Zegras, you know, or it's Maxime Comtois or something. It's not going to happen, but I would love to see Jim Benning find a way to get a very good top caliber prospect out of the Anaheim Ducks for Jake Vertanen, who is a proven NHL player who scored 18 goals last year. Now, I don't know if that's ever going to happen again, especially with the way he's been playing and trending in this season's worth of play, but you know what? Let's talk about it anyway. I know Jake for 10 and for Zagris is not going to happen. I'm just joking, guys. Please, lay off me in the comments section below. I don't want to hear it. But with Vertanen, it is interesting, man. If this guy signed a one-year contract, let's say it's the same contract, but it's only one year long, 2.55 AAV, it's fine because there's no second year that teams would have to worry about because the flat cap is still going to exist for next year. So any progress that is made or negative progress, I guess, what's the opposite of progress? A regression? That's what it is, yeah. Any regressions made, you can use that to bargain for your next contract, which would be beneficial because of the flat cap. So, Vertanen for Zagris. Let's see it happen, Jim Benning. Talk to me in the comments what you thought about all this stuff over here. Pearson, Arizona, my thoughts personally on Emil Pettersson being a guy thrown around in that conversation. Obviously, it's not going to happen like that, but you know what? A boy can dream. Then you have the Anaheim Vertan and stuff as well. Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. So, that's Rolls 99. And... Bye.